Hello, and welcome to Economics and You. I am your host, Mr. Samuelson. Today, we are going to be looking at the basic problem in economics, a good place to start in our economics class as we look at why we have the whole field of economics, and that is because of this one basic problem. But well, what is economics? Well, economics is the study of how people use limited resources to fulfill unlimited wants. That is, how do we manage the system of scarcity? That is the basic economic problem. The basic economic problem is scarcity, the idea that people have limited resources and unlimited wants. Now, in microeconomics, we are going to deal with individuals like you or firms or businesses, what you deal with on your regular basis every time you go to the grocery store or the gas station. Um, microeconomics deals with things on the small level. Now the small level can also include large corporations like General Motors or Apple computers. These are still small when compared with macroeconomic issues. Macroeconomics deals with the entire economy and the decisions of the government as a whole. And throughout this class, we are going to look at both microeconomics and macroeconomics, but not until we get a firmer understanding of the basic problem. The problem here is that we all have these wants and needs, and we have to make choices because of scarcity. Because we don't have unlimited resources, we cannot fulfill all of our wants. Now, to an economist, the needs are going to be the most important thing, the first thing that somebody looks at. And a need is something that is required for basic survival. We all have needs. And our needs are food, clothing, and shelter. Now, to an economist, we're not talking about fancy steak dinners. We're not talking about designer clothing. We're not talking about the penthouse apartment here. We're talking about the basic needs being the basic food, cheap clothing, whatever it takes to keep you warm, and whatever it takes to keep a roof over your head. It does not need to be fancy. An economist doesn't care for that when we talk about needs. More than our basic needs are our wants. All other items that rise above these basics are wants. Now, to satisfy our wants, we have to make choices. And we have to make choices because we have limitations to our resources. Our two major limitations are money. Nobody has unlimited money, not even Bill Gates. Nobody has unlimited money. So we have to make decisions about what we do with it. And nobody has unlimited time. And every time we choose to engage in something, even if it's just purchasing something, that uses up our time, making it a scarce resource, something that we might want unlimited of, and we just don't have it. So this is the problem of scarcity. And if I haven't already said it, the basic problem of economics is scarcity. Now, this is because there's a limit to everything that exists. Okay, There is nothing that exists in unlimited quantities. And scarcity means that we don't have enough time or money to satisfy all these wants. If we want to uh, spend time with our family, but we also want to earn enough money to pay for the things our family needs, sometimes those are in conflict. Sometimes we have to make a choice there. We don't have enough time to do both. Now, no matter how wealthy a person is, scarcity is going to be a problem. I'll go back to Bill Gates here. Bill Gates may want to invest in other companies. He may want to buy other companies expand his wealth or expand his influence or expand some of the good work that he's doing, but he doesn't have unlimited money. He can't purchase every company. He can't fund every initiative that he wants to. So he has to make choices as well. Now, when we talk about limitations in an economic sense, we're mostly talking about limitations to the factors of production. This is what economists really care about when we talk about scarcity. The factors of uh, production are things that are required to produce goods and services. Goods being those physical things that you can hold and use. It can go from food to shoes to buildings. Um, services are things that are provided that you can't really hold. It's, a, it's, 
it's a massage, it's your tax accountant, it's your teacher. These are all services. Now, the factors of production, and there are four of them that we're going to cover, uh, include land, labor, and capital. Those are the big three, land, labor, and capital. And any economist is going to talk to you about those three. But increasingly, some are including uh, this other idea of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship being the ideas of an individual that lead to a company. So let's get a little bit deeper picture of what land, labor, and capital are. Land, land refers to far more than just dirt on the ground, okay? When we, do, when we talk about land, we're not just talking about like the physical surface of the earth. We are talking about the resources of the earth. Minerals, so we're talking about coal and iron and gold and anything you might dig up out of the ground are included in land. Fish as a natural resource, water, trees, animals, all of these things that come from the earth are part of the land factor of production. Now, labor is the work that people do when they're producing goods. It can be the farmer driving his tractor, that's labor. It can be the uh, factory worker assembling the fender for the car, that's labor. It can be the teacher standing in the classroom, that's labor. Anytime we produce a good or a service, we are labor. Capital, Capital can be tricky. Um, it includes manufactured goods, which are used to make other goods or services. So if it is something that is made by man, and it's made by man to help with the production of goods or services, then it's capital. Uh, capital increases productivity, and there it helps to produce more goods and services with less work. So for example, again with our farmer, the tractor would be capital. It's something that is man-made, it increases his own production, it is capital. It also includes trucks, buildings, uh, factories, um, things that you have in stock at your company. These can all be included as capital. Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship includes the idea for business and the willingness to take risk. An entrepreneur is both somebody who is a thoughtful individual, has an idea, and a person of action, a person who moves on that idea and does something with it. Now, they have to take a risk when they do this. 30% of new businesses fail. That means if you have this great idea and you wanna launch it and you wanna take your business out into the real world, you got about a one in three chance of failing. And only a few of them become Apple computers. So it's a big risk. But we need entrepreneurs in our system, people who are willing to take these risks. Um, this, without this aspect of our economy, without people willing to take that risk, uh, our economy doesn't advance, we stagnate and we fail. All right, technology. Some economists would include technology as a, fourth, as a fifth factor of production, but I really think that it fits in well with entrepreneurship. It's, it's the ideas that lead to advancement. Um, technology can refer to any use of land, labor, or capital which produces more goods efficiently. It can be just a change in technique that can be included in technology. Um, whereas we used to plow our fields in straight lines, now we follow the curve of the earth. That is technology. Okay, um, Redirecting stream water to flow through your farm fields, that is technology. Uh, basic simple machines to complex machines, all are included in technology. Now the effect on income and wealth here is important for us to understand. How much each factor of production an individual has, how much land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, that's gonna help determine your wealth. The more you have of that, the wealthier you can be in the society. Uh, this also leads to different incomes. Income and wealth are different. Wealth is how much you have, income is how much you're making. Um, this principle applies to the nation as well. Uh, nations with more land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship are wealthier nations. We're gonna look at all of this um, throughout this course because these are key central ideas and we wanna make sure we have a solid understanding of them. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you learned something and farewell.